Good Monday morning. Hard to believe we're starting another week today, and I thank you for starting your Monday with us and uh, getting uh, this down sometime during uh, this uh, first day of the week. We're going to look at this week and talk about freedom. Uh, you know, I think that that is something we need to look at this week because of the fact that uh, there are a lot of things that are trying to encroach upon our freedoms, and so we need to uh, understand that spiritual freedom is important too. And the truth shall set you free. I love that. The scriptures tell us that, and the truth shall set you free. So let's start out with that on this Monday. I'm going to read to you out of the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 3. We're going to look at two verses, 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. But we all with unveiled faces behold, in, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord to the Spirit. So what does that tell us? That as we work not for our salvation, but through our salvation, and as we understand how important it is that sanctification is an ongoing thing, the more you, time you spend with the Lord, the you're, more you're going to reflect them. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, you stop and think about how uh, couples, when they spend a bunch of time together, they start looking together, looking like each other. Uh, you know, and uh, so they start kind of becoming a mirror of each other. My wife and I have been together so long now that uh, uh, we can finish each other's sentences. But it's funny how when you spend time with somebody, you start to mirror that person. And so that's what the Lord is telling us, that if we, through the power of God's Holy Spirit, that where the Lord is, the Spirit is, and when the Spirit of God is in us, we start to reflect more and more, and the closer we walk to God, the more we reflect Him. And the more freedom we have. You know, we oftentimes think the Ten Commandments and the statutes and all the things that we're told God wants us to do are going to keep us prisoners when in reality the opposite is true. And when you obey authority, it's sort of like children. When children have authority that gives them guidelines and gets them through life, they find freedom in those spaces and in the guidelines that are given to them to, lead, to, to, uh, to, to live. It's sort of like today. Uh, in our day and time. We've got those people that say they don't want policemen anywhere. They don't want uh, the police to have anything to do with uh, uh, telling them what to do. Well, you know, we're not going to be free very long. If we don't have the authority of law enforcement and we don't, as a country, go back and understand how important it is that we are a country of laws, we're going to lose our freedom because when you start letting the criminals control the streets, you can't get out in them. And the same thing is true of God. When you start letting Satan control and you start letting evil win, then what happens is truth is held hostage and truth is locked up. And for truth to have freedom, you've got to have an authority that makes sure that you can uh, operate and go up and down the streets. And the same thing is true spiritually. You need to have the authority of God to make you and allow you to have the freedom to walk uh, within the, the, the perimeters of his commandments and statutes. Now, as we look around us this Monday, I would like for us to think about freedom or liberty as our scripture speaks to us as we start our week. I would ask you to think and meditate on this text for the rest of the day, if not the rest of the week. Mark this down. Put it down. Uh, I would encourage you to put this on your mirror or somewhere where you can see it every day and just look at it about liberty and freedom. We are told that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and freedom. So this would tell us, by contrast, that where the Holy Spirit is not, it's the opposite. And the same thing is true of any kind of, uh, of freedom we're supposed to have. There has to be rules that operate and give that freedom and give you the freedom to operate inside those perimeters. My beloved fellow Christians, we have to understand that uh, I believe with all that I am, we stand on the razor's edge of where we are as a nation and land. If we throw out all types of authority and we just let thugs run the streets you're going to have exactly what's happening in some of our major cities you can't run a business because there's no laws you can't keep them from breaking into the stores and stealing stuff because there's nobody to stand between the lawlessness and the evil what the commandments do and what God's Holy Spirit does is stand in the gap between us and the devil and if we let the devil in and we keep backing up, pretty soon we're not going to have any freedom at all. 
pretty soon we're not going to be able to go to the store to buy a loaf of bread because the thugs have broke into the Albertsons and the Walmart here in town and stolen everything and there's nothing for us to go get, to, to buy with. And if you can't get to town because the highways and byways are plugged up with, with people that are breaking the law, there is no freedom. Spiritually, it's the same thing. Please get that. I still hold to the glimmer of hope that most of us in this nation are a freedom-loving nation and a nation of faith in the one true living God of the Bible. Here's your food for thought. Our Lord created in each of us the gift of choice. And in making a choice, we make... In not making a choice, we make a choice. You see, if we don't stand up for law and order, we don't stand up for whether it be in this nation or the statutes and commandments of God. If we don't stand up, we're making a choice. To not act on that freedom is to make a choice. To not stand for it is to sell out. We have to understand that the problem of this nation are systematic. Not the way there are de uh, many demand us to see it, but it is. It's a spiritual problem. You know, I hear all the time, every time I turn on the news, somebody saying, well, it's systematic. We have to go back to this. We have to go back to that. Or here's the root problem of it. The root problem of it is, folks, is evil and is spiritual. You make a choice, you're going to follow God and his statutes and commandments, or you're going to let lawlessness back you in a corner and rob you of freedoms. If we didn't have law and order in this nation, we wouldn't even be meeting in our church. Hey, California is cutting off utilities to the churches that are meeting there. As of yesterday, there was that big threat. And businesses that weren't going to close down and all the things that, uh, that weren't being done the way that some folks want them done. Hey, you get your electricity cut down. You get uh, people that aren't allowed to travel the streets, our freedoms. And we lived under total lack of freedom for several months. I don't want to go back to that. Spiritually or physically. The almighty authority, the creator God of the Bible. And that is still the root of the problem today. We don't want to have anybody have authority over us. Defund God. Make it to where God has no power or nothing in, no say in this nation. Take God out of the street squares. Take the Ten Commandments off of the public squares. Take God out of the schools. Take God out of the nation. Take in God we trust off of our money. Take away prayer in sporting events. Sounds to me like we're right on the way to losing our freedom. We don't have the right to pray. A coach that prays with his students now is fired. Getting narrower and narrower as this nation becomes more and more secular. you got a choice. We're either going to be a nation that follows the Bible or we're going to be a nation that falls under the rules of so many other nations and we become a socialist nation or a communist nation. By the way, communism is a religion itself. They don't allow you to worship the one true living God. You have to worship the government. Be careful. Don't lose your freedom. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, please, Lord, be with us as we read the last part of the scripture in closing. In Jesus' name we pray. But we all, with unveiled faces, behold, in, as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, and are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. Are you being transformed, transported, transformed, be there.